Hello and welcome to the 16th round of the 2016 PCC Light Series season here at Rockingham Speedway in North Carolina. Qualifying on the pole is Dustin Oliver with his fifth pole of the season. And Lenore Scurry is on his outside. JC Carpenter there on the inside of row number two. Ran in the PCC Trucks race, which just finished a couple hours ago. Ryan Jeffries took the pole for that over Will Crawford and would lead the field for the majority of the first portion of the race. However, there would be a good battle between Crawford and Jeffries for the majority of the race. And uh, that would extend all the way to the end on the white flag lap. Jeffries felt a bit behind, but he gets a huge run here, helped by Mary Sue. And he's going to take a look on the inside with help from Chris Benson pushing from back there. Side by side, coming out of turn number four. That's going to be a very close battle for the win. And Ryan Jeffries is going to take his second career win in the PCC Truck Series by four one thousandths of a second. The closest finish in Truck Series history taking a look at the rest of the grid for the PCC Lights race. Austin Sanders is back there. Uh, he had a good run in Canada. Uh, Genesis Engineering sweeps row 15. Carter Fitzgerald did not have a good qualifying effort, neither did Casey Lester. Uh, Tauger Racing U is not on the back row, surprisingly. That is actually uh, Grand Strand Racing who swept the back row this time. And with that, Dustin Oliver leads the field to the green flag. He gets a pretty decent jump over Lenore Scurry there on the outside, and he's going to pull ahead a little bit going into turn number one. Dustin Oliver has seven poles in his career and no wins to show for it, so he's looking to snag that first win here today. And that's uh, partially why his teammate Sam Burkhart in the 51 is getting the call up to the Cup Series, and he isn't. By lap number two, Matt Tauger's already starting to lose the draft in the 60 car. This year has been an absolute disaster for Tauger Racing Unit, and uh, that's that looks like it's going to continue here today with uh, Matt Tauger already losing the draft. Kelly Thomas in the 72 qualified pretty well, but she's already starting to fall back quite a bit and holding up that outside line in the process. Uh, sounds like her car is not running in high gear right now, and by my understanding, a lot of teams have been complaining about the transmissions on these cars at this track. It's been causing some issues uh, with speed uh, and performance throughout the weekend. Patrick O'Hannigan takes the lead away from Dustin Oliver for the first time. Patrick O'Hannigan, uh, both of his cars have wins in the series and his team is contending for a promotion spot, doing pretty well. And it looks like we've got a caution in the back there. A couple cars are going around. Caution number one's gonna come out on lap four as Damon Jones takes the lead. Looks like we've got three wide between J.C. Carpenter, Jeff Fisher, and Greg Maddox. And uh, Fisher and Carpenter are going to go around without too much of a problem. Carpenter qualified third for this race, so that's a tough break for him. But it looks like he doesn't have any damage. On the restart, Sam Meyer's struggling. He, The three-time winner in the series this year, sounds like he's down a cylinder. He's going to pull that car into the pits, and they're going to take a look. And we've got a car stopped on the inside. That's Jeff Fisher. Second in points coming into this race, the 27 car is going to slow and stall on the backstretch. So this is big for the championship as Jeff Fisher had closed the gap uh, down to Sam Burkhart by a bit. Uh, it, it's now under one race, but I don't think it's going to stay that way if he can't get that car refired and back out on track. And uh, he's going to sit there and get a push from the tow truck as, uh, look at that gap that Dustin Oliver has pulled on the rest of the field. Uh, looks like we've got some pack racing. It's not as bad as it was at Iowa, but uh, we've still got a pack and the draft does mean everything at this track. Uh, you can see there we're not three wide like we were at Iowa, but it's still two wide racing and uh, cars are still racing in a pack, albeit not super bunched up like they were at Iowa. So Dustin Oliver hanging up at front. Looks like Sam Burkhart's going to make a challenge for the lead, but something is going to go wrong with his car. He's going to pull it to the inside, and that's the championship leader going out of it. So Sam Burkhart pulls to the inside. This is good news for uh, Jeff Fisher. Dustin Oliver, third in points, is has to be excited about this because that means that he has a chance to close the gap for the championship on his teammate. Jeff Fisher's going to get back out on track three laps down. And uh, he's going to try and salvage everything he can here. I don't think it's going to be that much, but it looks like we're going to have a decent amount of attrition here today with cars falling out. As Circle Track Racing up in the top five, we haven't seen this all year, but Circle Track Racing is doing an exceptional job. Carpenter, who was in that first accident, and Isaac Parsons working together on the bottom. They're going to get around uh, Zach Meyer, who just went a lap down there. 
and they're going to take the lead away from Dustin Oliver on the inside. Carpenter making a great move with uh, some drafting help from his teammate. But, oh, we've got cars around. We've got a car over back there. That's caution number two on lap 17. Coming back to the caution. Virgil Sheedy goes three wide with Meyer and Lester. Pushes up high, and he's going to go over as we got a separate incident back there. Virgil Sheedy with a wild ride going into turn number three up and over. And that's going to be the end of his day. Looked like uh, Denny Adams was also involved. Lenore Scurry going on board with Denny Adams here. Looks like they just pinched together. That's Dima Van Hall going around. Uh, Ryan Pritchard there. Lucy Nectal Jr. is involved. And wow, that is a wild ride for Fergal Sheedy. And Lucy Nectal Jr. here, going to take a look at what he saw. Uh, just three cars got together there in the back behind uh, the flipping car of Sheedy. And that's going to do a lot of damage to Lucy Nectal Jr. He's going to stay out on track. Chris Benson broke down, coming to take the uh, caution, and uh, he'd get some help back to the pits. He'd lose one lap in the process, which is a tough break, because he had a third place run in the Truck Series race, and was running pretty well here today, too. Back up front on the restart, the circle track racing cars of Parsons and Carpenter are 1-2, as uh, Roman Carpont makes a move on the inside, but this is an excellent performance for this team that hasn't really shown a whole lot of speed. Parsons has been up in the top five a couple times, and Carpenter has shown some flashes of brilliance, but never at the same time have, the, have these cars been up at the front of the field. And just, this is the best performance for them of the season. Same thing with Ryan Matthews Racing, with Carter Fitzgerald and Tiffany Matthews up in the top three right now, pushing Roman Carpont. And uh, this team is sitting 17th in the team standings. The only team they're beating is Tauger Racing Unit. And this is the kind of run that they need to get themselves back up uh, in the fight to uh, stay in the series for next season as Dustin Oliver sits uh, in the lead. It only took him four laps to get near the front, but he's got Ron Yave and Alex Constantine up there making a move for second place below uh, Ron Yave. Uh, we haven't seen those cars near the front, and I believe Yave actually qualified last for this race. To see him up there is nothing short of remarkable as they put Ryan Pritchard a lap down. He was in that last caution. Alex Constantine's going to get a point for leading a lap. And uh, Turbo Sports being involved in that relegation battle, they need every point they can get at this point. So Turbo Sports uh, locked in that relegation battle for the final spot. They've swapped it with Grand Strand Racing each week, it seems. Is uh, going to stay up near the front. He's going to lose the lead there to uh, Daniel Bouchard. But he's going to hang up near the front of the field, and that's a great run for that 007 team. As Tiffany Matthews is going to go three wide with Constantine and Matt Beck, and she's going to go around with help from Damon Jones. Gabriel Messina is going to get involved, but that's not going to do a lot of damage to Tiffany Matthews. Both cars are going to keep going without much of a problem. Tough break for Tiffany Matthews. She was having an excellent run here. Ron Yave up at the front of the field. He qualified last for this race. And uh, he's actually got quite a bit of speed in that car. Uh, just missed the setup in qualifying, it would seem. But Ron Yave, I mentioned before, uh, Grand Strand Racing and uh, Turbo Sports are in a relegation battle right now. And each team seems to be swapping blows with laps led here today. As Roman Carpon's going to take the lead away from Isaac Parsons, who found himself at the front of the field yet again. As uh, looks like, yeah, we've got the Circle Track Racing up in the top 10. Oh, that's uh, Justin King going around there. Caution number four about halfway through this race. And it looks like uh, Parsons, Jones, and uh, King just got pinched together. And that's going to be a log jam. We got quite a few cars taking damage. Tiffany Matthews is there. Austin Sanders. Uh, Alex Posington. Uh, Matt Tauger runs into there. And so does Trek Tauger. Uh, don't know where the brakes were on that 06 car. As... Uh, Carpenter is going to continue to lead on the restart. He's got Daniel Bouchard behind him. Haven't seen up him up near the front all season. That's uh, J.F. Davila and jo Josiah Hofacker is up in the top five. He's been nowhere all day. We got quite a few cars in the back there with damage holding up some of the faster cars. Looks like they've sorted out single file up at the front with uh, Dustin Oliver in P5. As, oh, we've got another caution here. Uh... Justin King tried to clear Tiffany Matthews and just got hooked up into Trek Tauger. That's going to be caution five on lap 43. A lot of these cars were already pretty heavily damaged, but nobody's going to drop out after this wreck. 
This saves Denny Adams, who's up in the top 10 in points. He had a tire go down on the restart and would have to pit. However, he would stay on the lead lap, uh, catching a break here, and uh, he'd stay up in the hunt as James Beverly leads on the restart now as that's Zach Meyer making a move on the inside. He is a lap down. He did get his car's engine repaired, but James Beverly looking to avenge a, uh, a last lap incident in the Canada race where uh, he failed to finish the job because his car failed him as Lenore Scurry takes the lead with help from Greg Maddox and JC Carpenter yet again. However, it looks like the top three have broken away. It's Carpenter, Bouchard, and that's uh, Dustin Oliver on the inside. And looks like th here's going to be the battle for the lead uh, in the later stages as we've got Austin Sanders back there uh, hanging around two up in fourth place. An excellent run for uh, Austin Sanders in that Turbo Sports car. Lenore Scurry's back there in fifth place. For Sanders, though, this run couldn't have come at a better time. He is having the best run of his career up in fourth place right now. He's got a little bit of damage, but that isn't slowing him down. Uh, he had his best career run in Canada of a seventh place. Uh, looks like Lenore Scurry is going to get the draft, and she might challenge him here. But uh, Sanders still hanging up in the top five, doing an excellent job for the struggling Turbo Sports operation. Josiah Hofacker is having a great run, too. He's up in the top ten with J.F. Davila and uh, Greg Maddox and Carter Fitzgerald just a little bit behind uh, this lead group. They're having excellent runs, all of them. Greg Maddox especially, we haven't seen him up near the front too much, and we expected so much from him uh, earlier on in the season. As Lenora Scurry is going to take over the lead there from uh, J.C. Carpenter as we're hitting some heavy lap traffic. That's Isaac Parsons and uh, Matt Tauger getting out of the way as J.C. Carpenter goes way high near the wall as uh, a lot of cars are ha having transmission problems. See there how quickly they passed uh, Isaac Parsons, who was running up near the front. Tauger is going to go a lap down here, Trek Tauger, and he's going to stay out of the way of the leaders. As uh, taking a look at this, uh, looks like Dustin Oliver's fallen back a bit. So the top three now are J.C. Carpenter, uh, Daniel Bouchard, and Lenora Scurry. And it looks like they're going to be battling for the lead with uh, Zach Meyer there sitting a lap down. As uh, coming up on some lap traffic here, that's uh, that's Denny Adams going a lap down. And uh, he's going to hold up. Lenore Scurry and Daniel Bouchard's going to take over. As J.C. Carpenter makes a bonsai move up the middle. He's going to pass Lenore Scurry there. He's going to pass Daniel Bouchard. And Zach Meyer being held up by Matt Beck, who's got a bit of damage. And he's going to take over the lead using the middle line. So J.C. Carpenter has a ton of speed in that 89 car, and he is going to be a threat for the win easily here. As we uh, entered the closing laps of the race, we've got two laps to go here. Uh, starting now, it's two laps to go. As uh, time's going to expire on the race this lap, Zach Meyer is used as a pick to uh, get Lenore Scurry up into the lead. And J.C. Carpenter is going to stall out on the outside trying to get some speed up uh, he doesn't look like he's got a lot of speed and he's going to get stuck behind Pat O'Hannigan there however up at the front Lenore Scurry is going to take the white flag she just got around Zach Meyer here's Ron Yave going a lap down he's having some transmission problems as uh, Casey Lester up there also having some issues he's had issues all day but Lenore Scurry coming down the backstretch it looks like a clear track in front of her but JC Carpenter he's got quite a bit of a uh, head of steam going he's really closing that gap coming into turn three turn number four he's going to make a look low it does he have enough jc carpenter on the inside i don't think he has enough speed and lenore scurry is going to take her third win of the season here at the rockingham speedway going to take a look and see just how close this was uh, carpenter had such a great run such a valiant effort to get up back at the front of the field but it just wasn't enough, and it's going to be 34 one-hundredths of a second deciding that for Lenora Scurry. Taking a look at the rest of the top 20, Daniel Bouchard finished in P3, his best career finish. Dustin Oliver still missing that first career win, P4. Greg Maddox, best run of his season. It's been an absolute disaster for him, but I'm sure he'll be smiling after this one in P5. J.F. Davila, P6. Austin Sanders ties his best career run in P7. Carter Fitzgerald gets a great run in P8. Josiah Hofacker, same thing with him. His team is in the relegation battle. And uh, P10 
is Roman Carpont, who had an excellent run all day. D uh, fat, drunk, stupid racing gets a uh, P11 and P12 finish with Wormer and Belushi, and uh, only 16 cars were on the lead lap at the end, Constantine being the last one of those. And uh, Casey Lester finished the first car one lap down, as you saw he went a lap down there on the last lap of the race. And now taking a look at the points with his issues today, Sam Burkhart's lead drops down to 18 points over Dustin Oliver, who's up to P2 once again. Lenore Scurry, P3 on 389, jumps over Jeff Fisher, who had so many issues today. Uh, both him and Burkhart would finish, but three laps down. JF Davila, P5, having an excellent season. DJ Motorsports sits 6th and 7th with Damon Jones and Denny Adams. Casey Lester still up in the top 10 uh, on 336. Lucy Nectal Jr. drops down to 9th, tied with James Beverly for that position. Roman Carpon, P11, having a great season. Same thing with Patrick O'Hannigan in P12. Isaac Parsons sitting up there in P13, having a great run. Alex Posington, teammate to JF Davila in P14. Matt Beck falls down a bit into P15. Daniel Bouchard jumps up into P16. Justin King down to P17. He's had kind of a rough season. Kelly Thomas is up to P18. And Greg Maddox up in the top 20. Uh, really expecting, really had high expectations for that team coming into the year. And uh, Josiah Hofacker makes an appearance up in the top 20 with that struggling Grand Strand Racing team. And finally, taking a look at the team points, with Sam Brown Racing and Lambert Motorsports expected to defer their promotion due to their status as junior teams, DJ Motorsports, Petrol Tech Engineering, and Syzygy Engineering are the teams in the promotion spots with Team Canada one point back. Winslet Motorsports jumped over Ekdal Autosport for 10th in the standings, and Grand Strand Racing is the last team in, with Turbo Sports, Ryan Matthews Racing, and Tower Racing Unit on the outside in the relegation spots.